Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, uh, still on metal cutting machines uh, for mechano techniques and for uh, working on the question paper which was written in November 2022. We have got question number three, where we were given 3.1, a drill with a diameter of 20 millimeters is used to drill a hole in a workpiece at 1,500 revs per minute. Take the power, the motor power is 700 watts and the efficiency of drive is 70%. Find the force exerted on each of the two cutting edges of the drill. Take note at each of the two. All right. So in this case, we have got, uh, let's just take our information. Uh, take note, we've got a diameter, of which is uh, 20 uh, millimeters, we can just convert this to meters by dividing by 1000, which is going to be 0, 0,02 meters. Uh, so this is uh, at a speed of, so this is the speed or N, which is uh, 1500 uh, revs per minute. Take the motor power as 700 watts, which means we are given the input power in this case, PN of uh, 700 to the motor, that is the input power. And the efficiency of the of drive is 70%. So efficiency of uh, 70%, which as a decimal, if we divide by 100, this will be 0, 0,7. Also, uh, okay, so this is the information that we have. Then we are asked to calculate the force or to find the force exerted on each of the two cutting edges of the drill, which means we need to calculate F, but of each of the two, all right, so how are we going to have this? Take note, it's at the cutting edges of the drill. So we are talking about at the output in this case. So this is supposed to be from the output. So where can we have the force from the output? Okay, so if you are to check here, uh, remember that uh, from our formulas, guys, we know that uh, force and power can be related to say that... Uh, Power is actually equivalent to force times the velocity, which is uh, the velocity in meters per second. But if we are to check, we need the force that is at the output, meaning to say we are going to relate with the output power. So having this, if we can find F, it means our F is going to be the output power over the velocity that is in meters per second. So we do not have this output power we also do not have this velocity. Can we use the formula that power is equivalent to 2 pi nt over 60? Well, someone can ask that. From this information that we are, we are having in this case, we still need the output force in order for us to have the torque so that we can calculate the torque from the radius, which can actually work. But, okay, so which means we have to calculate the output power from there from the output, which means we have to need the force, so meaning to say this was going to limit us, but uh, it was going to work. If you calculate the torque from there, then you calculate the force, okay? But this is can be direct, even though we do not have the output power because we've got efficiency. So how can we have the output power? Let's start with the output power. So from efficiency, uh, remember that efficiency is equivalent to the output power over the input power times 100%. But since we have got a decimal, so I'm not going to use 100%, so I'm going to use 0, 0,7 is equal to P out over P in, and our P in is 700. So this can give us P out cross multiply. One times P out, that would be P out is equal to 0, 0,7 times 700. So we are going to multiply. Uh, take note, uh, 0, 0,7 times 700 like this, which is going to be our output power, which is uh, 490. So this is going to be 490 watts. All right, so we have got the output power. We do not have the velocity in this case. So where are we going to have the velocity from? So here we've got output power. So velocity uh, can be taken from this formula. Remember that V is equivalent to pi uh, dn. Uh, if it, this is in revs per minute, Therefore, use over 60. That will be our velocity in meters per second. So V is equal to pi times the diameter. We've got our diameter in meters, uh, 0, 0,02 times the speed in revs per minute of uh, 1,500. So this 
gives us uh, over 60 gives us the velocity in meters per second. So our velocity is going to be 1,571 uh, in uh, meters per second. That is uh, to three decimal places in this case. So we have the velocity and we also have the output power. So meaning to say we can calculate the force that we are given because we are saying here the force at the output is going to be the output power of 490 watts divided to the velocity of 1,571 in meters per second. So meaning to say our force is going to be 311,903. So this is in Newton. So this corresponds from the output power. So this will be the force at the output. So you can just write it as FO for the output, or you can just leave it like that. But take note, we calculated the total, but here they need on each of these two. So meaning to say, therefore, per each, that is per cutting uh, edge, per each cutting edge, so we need F per cutting edge, per cutting edge, per each cutting edge, per each. So meaning to say, we are going to divide, there are two of them, because we are told two cutting edges, so this is going to be the one that we had, the total force of three, one, uh, 311, comma 903 divided to 2 so this is going to be uh 155 comma 952 all right so this will be 952 in newtons all right so this will be the force per cutting edge or per each cutting edge all right so these are the typical questions that you might be given and uh all you just need is to formulate our formulas with the information that we are given so that we can calculate whatever that is being asked on the question. If we check on the other part of the question, that was uh, 3.2. Uh, let's see what we have. I'm just going to leave this space for information. Uh, we are given now the moving blades, uh, the moving table on a horizontal milling machine is a mass of uh, 500 kgs. Uh, the work is mounted on the table is a mass of 18 kg. So we've got uh, two things here, the milling machine and also the work piece that is there. So on our table, we have got two things that are going to affect uh, the table in this case, which is the mass of the milling machine, which I'm just going to have this in capital letters, uh, 500 kgs, and the mass of the work piece uh, which is uh, 13 kg. So these two, they add up together uh, to give us the total mass. All right. While list we are given the clamping screws and, and clamps as a mass. Also, you also have the screws and everything that uh, we are given in this case. All right. So we have got uh, the screws and so forth and so forth uh, that we have. They have got a mass of what? Of four kilograms. The feed on the table is... So we've got uh, the speed of the feed, which is uh, input. Okay, the feed on the table. Sorry, uh, that is that is uh, the, 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 the distance that we are going to have. Uh, the speed we are not given here. So this is going to be 250 uh, millimeters per minute. That is the time. And the coefficient of friction on the table, uh, the table and the slide is uh, 0, 0,06. So we've got the coefficient of friction. So the question is, find the power lost as a result of friction. Take note, guys. As a result of friction between the table and the slides. The power that is lost due to this as a result, that is what they are saying, due to the friction. So if we are to consider the power, remember from the formulas that we had previously, we talked about this, that power can actually be related to the force and the velocity or we can use uh, any other part but how is how can we how are we going to have this how are we going to have this which which force are we going to use take note this is the power to overcome friction meaning to say the force there has to be the frictional force and we must have the frictional force there all right so in this case uh let us have the information let us have the information here uh let us have our information okay okay we have got uh, the frictional force that we need okay which you need to calculate let us see how we can have this uh take note we've got uh, the coefficient of friction 
So you can play around with the coefficient of friction. Remember, this is equal to the frictional force over the normal reaction. Okay, this part, we've been talking about this uh, previously. So let's just save our information to calculate the frictional force. The coefficient of friction, that is a uh, zero comma. All right, or let me just make this the subject before we confuse each other because we talked about this before. And we say the frictional force is going to be the coefficient of friction times uh, the normal reaction if we cross multiply both this is the same as over one. But remembering that this is equivalent to the mass times the gravitational acceleration. But this is supposed to be the total mass of everything that is acting. We are talking about the 500 kgs, the 13 k, every mass that we are given. So in this case, we are supposed to combine all these three masses. So this is the total mass. All right, so that means we are going to have our frictional force as the coefficient of friction, uh, 0, 0,06 times the mass, which I say the normal reaction times the gravitational acceleration, which is we are going to add all these masses uh, that is going to be 500 times 13, uh, sorry, we are adding, not multiplying. We are still we are still on the total mass. So we're going to add everything uh, plus 13 plus four. So this is our like our total mass that we have in this case. Then times the gravitational acceleration of uh, 9,81. So this gives us the frictional force, which is going to be 304, comma, uh, 3062 Newton like that. Okay, so you can uh, just write to three decimal places or we can just leave it like that since we are still calculating uh, everything that we need everything there. So remember we have got uh, the, the, in this case, the feed. So the feed, this is supposed to be uh, in revs per minute. Okay, so this is supposed to be revs per minute. So we can be given in that quantity, but it's supposed to be like revs per minute, the speed that we are given the speed. So this can give us from the speed, okay? If you are if you are relating to the to the speed that you are given, uh, from the the feed, okay? So let's get back. Let me understand, guys. Let, let we do not want uh, to the feed and the table is two hundred uh millimeters per minute, okay? So this was supposed to be uh in meters. Remember, we have got millimeters per minute, all right? So this is fine like that. Uh, in millimeters per minute. So this is actually fine like that, okay? Millimeters per minute. But we need this speed to have the velocity. Remember, uh, did I write it right? Where did I write my formula? Okay, on top here. So we calculated the frictional force. We are fine here. So now we need the velocity. Velocity, which we know is measured in meters per second. All right. So here we are going to convert this millimeters per second to give us velocity, millimeters per minute to meters per second. All right. So we can have our power. I think uh, we understand this formula, guys. Uh, so our power is going to be the frictional force. That's 304, comma, uh, 3062 uh, times the velocity now meters per second. So millimeters means times 10 to the exponent of minus three to convert to uh, meters, or we can divide by 1000, which is going to be uh, 0, 0.25 in meters. So you can use 0, 0.25 here. Okay, everything divided by per second, per second. This is per minute but we need to pay second. So one minute converted to second, it's we divide by 60 per minute per second, okay? So one minute, two seconds, that's a 60 seconds. So this is going to give us the power from there. All right, so that is uh, the power that is going to be uh, affected by the frictional force. So you can just even write this as PF, PF due to friction, okay? So this is going to be, one comma uh two six eight in watts. So the power to overcome this friction is going is going to be one comma two six eight in watts. Okay, so these are the typical questions that you might have 
uh, or you might be asked on your final exams, guys. Let's work on more of these ones. Uh, okay, so that was uh, the last part of the question, uh, which is seven marks for that. Just to relate formulas together, playing around with the formulas like what we got here. So we have to calculate the frictional force, which we can take from the coefficient of friction, the velocity from the feed, 250 millimeters per minute, but we need meters per second. So we convert to meters per second. So that is the idea there, okay? So this is what we had, guys, are from Amazon African Motives, uh, working with past exam papers, 